Welcome to Before You Brew, the series where I break down a commander and its synergies in five minutes or less so you know what you'll end up with if you decide to build it. This includes price, core synergies, and different ways to build the deck. Today, we are going to be breaking down Arami of the Dead Tide, so please subscribe. Arami of the Dead Tide is one blue black for one four, and it reads, Tap. Exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. Target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn. The Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. What is Encore? Encore reads, Exile the creature and pay its mana cost. For each opponent, create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. They gain haste. Sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. Activate this ability only as a sorcery. What does every deck with this commander care about. The first important thing is you have to get something into your yard. You need stuff to recur for the commander to get you any value. So usually you're going to do that with mill and sacrifice. Combat damage, ETB, death triggers, and sacrifice. These are the four major ways that we can take advantage of the recursion. Combat damage includes things that deal damage when you deal damage to an opponent and when you attack. These are the core things and you're going to try and get as many aspects of the deck working with this as possible, including Mill. Next is Sundial of the Infinite. You can tap it to end the turn, which exiles all spells and abilities, including the one that from Encore would sacrifice the tokens. You can just exile that spell and you'll keep those tokens forever. Other forms of recursion can be important. You can also do untap effects in order to be able to use a commander, in order to be able to use a Rami multiple times. You only want to do the best ones because you don't need very many, but you also have to remember ETB death, attack triggers, and sacrifice. Those are the important things, so if you can get them attached to that, then that's great. As I said a minute ago, you're going to want to attach as many base aspects of the deck as possible to sacrifice combat damage, death, and enter the battlefield. You're going to want to take as many aspects of the deck and put them into sacrifice combat damage, death, enter the battlefield as possible. So that's ramp, draw, and remove. Options of how you want to build the deck. I've said this many times. You can do either combat triggers or ETB or death triggers slash sacrifice, or you can do all of the above. The advantages of these are if you do combat triggers you can get evasion and you can get other combat triggers that work with it like with you attacking such as biden of thassa effect with etb effects you can get things from ben that benefit from etb like guardian project or panharmonicon and with sacrifice effects and death effects you can get aristocrats but if you do all the above you don't get to run any of those synergistic effects but you get to run the best possible triggers from getting it back. The biggest upside to this deck is it's very resilient to wraths and removal. It's like any recursion deck. You're just going to keep on bringing it back and recasting it and getting value and your opponents are going to waste cards trying to stop you. The biggest downside is it's going to be very difficult to build this deck. There's a very wide range of things that you can search for and it's just that you need to find and look through. If you search for death, sack, ETB, combat damage, you'll end up with a large, large amount, hundreds, maybe even thousands of cards to look through, and you're just not gonna be able to look through them all. So you're gonna have to rely on sorting by EDH rec rank, which is a feature on Scryfall, and you're just kinda gonna have to rely on what other people have done. And the upside to that is you'll always be building this deck. It's not going to be that uncommon for you to just run into another card that is great in the deck. Power level. I am using the Play EDH Discord server power level scale. There's a link in the description explaining it. If you're doing Battle Cruiser for this deck, you're typically going to be co doing combat triggers or everything. And you could bring this down to a $50 budget if you want. Mid power, this is typically going to be anything except for combat triggers, although combat triggers is possible. Roughly $200. High power, uh, this is typically going to be sacrifice and aristocrats. This is an attrition type deck with a lot of removal and counter spells. Typically not going to go below $400. You can replace your core aspects of the deck with the ETB, death, sacrifice, combat triggers, which makes it a lot cheaper. You don't have to run as many staples. To jumpstart your brewing, I left some scryfall searches in the description related to the categories I talked about. Sacrifice, death, ETB triggers, and all of the above. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. Uh, I intend to make a lot more of this series. This was my episode. Please comment or hit me up on Discord with suggestions of how to improve.
Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time.